It's picking you up. Okay. I think it hears you. Ha 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 ha. I guess we're just gonna have to like speak. Ha ba 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 ha ha. Singer, oh my God! No. You held that. I know. I was just trying to out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just competitive. <laughs> I, I was like you. really I impressed. Let you I, do <laughs> and I wasn't even looking, but I Are felt. Are you a singer? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny Johnson, everybody's in the house. Yeah, we just fucking nailed that. We shit. nailed it. She t- stole my dog. Yeah, Chaplin's all over my private area. Wow. Does your crotch feel nice and warm? It do. It do. <laughs> it do. I'm not mad. I'm going to get me some Chaplin panties. Oh, he's such a little whore. He's such a lap whore. He is. Oh, my God. And he, now he's licking his dick. He's See? He's licking his dick. You've got quite, quite I the... This is literally... <laughs> this, this, should, this could actually be called a sex move. It's like, what? what is it called when your dog <laughs> is on your lap and licks his dick while on your crotch? It's called a Chaplin. <laughs> It's called Dying Alone. <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> Welcome to the pod. And this is also the first time we're meeting in the flesh. Yes, it is. That's bizarre. I know. It, in a weird way, I was like, I, f- I felt like I met you. but I then feel I'm like, like I know you. I know. Well, dead I Dad Club. <laughs> it's a Dead Dad Club. Shout out to Dead Dads. What? what? We're all here. No, you're not alone. Well, you are now because your dad died. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Dead Dads, a uh, piece of Joey P is here. <laughs> What was your dad's first name? Joseph. Joseph. And it was funny because when you saw this, you you said, "What parts do you think?" Are <laughs> I you if you got the dick. <laughs> I asked specifically for just my dad's just, just twig dick. and berries. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't laugh, what's the point of life? <laughs> I think if my dad had thought it out better, he would have probably said just make sure that you sift out my <laughs> yeah keep, and give it to jenny <laughs> keep a little urn like a dick urn put a little dick urn a dick urn, a, a dick urn. <laughs> daddy's dick urn <laughs> <laughs> i do i mean it's strange that we haven't this is how we're meeting in this uh context but we are linked by a couple different things yes i am dear friends with with jill with jill uh-huh. and a comedy uh-huh. and the dead dad thing and the dead dad thing we, and, and the us dog both being thing. white people uh, both being white blonde bitches white blonde bitches <laughs> horrible people horrible people we are yeah. the problem we are the, <laughs> the root of all societal problems <laughs> everything that's wrong with life <laughs> is our fault by the it way, is white women fault. we're the new white man oh we really are we really are we gotta stop calling people while they're barbecuing <laughs> we gotta stop calling the police on them we stop, gotta stop tailgating stop tailgating <laughs> Tailgating. Just stop tailgating. We have to stop tailgating. We have to stop um, enabling white men. Stop, <laughs> I, I need like the college girls to stop wearing the same shit. Yes, yeah, stop wearing the. I literally just took off a shirt I was gonna wear uh-huh. for you because I felt like it looked like a Kylie Jenner starter kit. It was this, <laughs> these half shirts that everything everyone has these. Where's the rest of the fucking shirt? Just what? How old are? Is it an OP shirt? Yeah. What from is? The yeah. What is this? 80s? Is this? <laughs> Is it? Oh, oh! You're cool. You're in a new champion sweatshirt. How retro! Yeah, I'm like. I was around when that company went ish- bankrupt. They issued that <laughs> to us when I was in high school. Yeah, and sports. that's what we had. We had to wear champion sweatshirts in high school. I just saw this picture of Kylie Jenner that she posted of her and her best friend, and it was like on Daily <laughs> Mail, and it and it was the two of them wearing the same shit, but, oh. uh, but of course a different twenty two them from when I was twenty two. Right. They're in front of a Bentley, kind of wearing the same shit, and it said. Kylie Jenner with her lash expert best friend. Lash <laughs> And I was like, expert. oh, God, that takes me back. <laughs> when, yeah, because when I was 22, me and my lash expert best friend rolled around in a Bentley on girls' night. A Bentley? I was with my meth dealer next to a RAV4 that had one I wheel. Was, I was in a Ford Probe. <laughs> I was in a Ford Probe wearing my roommate's shirt she wore out getting the night probed. before that smelled like fucking cigarettes getting probes so yeah. you could get some weed a hundred percent yeah the 20s have changed i'd yeah, say i'm, I'm standing in a right. parking lot looking at an 18 wheeler on shrooms <laughs> going, i think it's optimus prime if we stop he'll shape shift and- <laughs> That's literally a true story of my 22nd birthday. I just stood in a Denny's parking lot looking at an 18 wheeler and I was like, You can change. You can go ahead and do it. I was like, What are you doing? I'm like, I think it's Optimus Prime from the Transformer. 
That would be awesome, man. I just want to be best friends with my car. Everyone's like, no, that's a trucker getting a blowjob <laughs> sitting in the cab in the Denny's parking lot. I'm like, no, you don't know. No, you don't no, understand. No, 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 no. The you car don't. and I are communicating. You don't understand. I'm like, shh, shh, shh. It's okay. Do you still shroom? Uh, the last time I did, <laughs> I had the. I, I always have the best time. I just do it every so Every often. so often? Yeah, so it's fun. Why? Why is it more fun every so often? Because if you do it all the time, it's not. It takes away the... It loses its appeal. You're it's right. Like you do it on a special occasion, then it's just fun. Then right. Then I'm cartwheeling down a fairway in Palm Springs. <laughs> oh <my laughs> God, you sound from... fun on mushrooms. Yeah. Oh, my God. The last time I did it, I was like, look at these palm trees. They all started to look like Tina Turner <laughs> in various <laughs> stages of her life because the, the her hair, you know, like the, if you looked yeah. in the dark and the moon was really bright and I was like, I think Erica Badu is actually behind her. I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to jinx it, but look, and they were swaying, and I was like, this is so much fun. I'm going to jump in the pool. It feels like jello. <laughs> <laughs> this is the greatest day I of my life. I need your mushroom dealer. <laughs> Last time I did mushrooms, I had a panic attack after painting a really horrific, actually, I have it back here. I'll show you oh, please show what me. I painted. Your and artwork I, on shrooms? I, I did some artwork on shrooms that I auctioned off because the proceeds went to Alzheimer's Association. <laughs> look at this one. I don't know. It's me blowing a strawberry. I don't know well, what. But you were getting validation because there's a check mark. There's a che <laughs> Those are my eyelashes. It's I'm verified. a lash expert. Those are, that's my eyelashes. If you look at it this way, it looks like it's like a bush with a thing and a check mark. But if you look at it this way, you're eating, you're blowing a, a strawberry. Blowing a strawberry behind a spruce. With some like... <laughs> villain cartoon villain eyebrows i don't know I, I i and that was on like a tenth of a sh of that's impressive a great of a whatever the basically a tenth of a, a whole mushroom like the mushroom was this big uh -huh. a tenth of that and I, this is what happened that's really i mine was in a chocolate bar form see i think that's better i feel like it's better if you have like a little bit of food or something <laughs> with it <laughs> the funny thing was the girl that i got it from she she gave it to me and I said I was going to Palm Springs for my friend's birthday. And then when I opened it up, she left an index card. I still have it because it was too funny. <laughs> and Green Marker gave me instructions. Hey, <laughs> so just to let you know, when you open this up, it's going to look like a Hershey bar. There's going to be, you know, 12 individual pieces. Maybe start off with half a one, depending on your tolerance. But knowing you, just have the whole one. <laughs> <laughs> And then she said, just be careful because they're potent. And then she scratched out the word potent and then wrote the word potent again. <laughs> she spelled it right the first time and then rewrote it again. And I was like, I can never throw it. <laughs> no. <laughs> was she on mushrooms when she wrote it? <laughs> but it was, I showed it to my friend Dan. That we, it was him and I doing it. And I go, what is this? And he goes, D it's potent. Potent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, she wasn't wrong to write it twice. Yeah, she's like, um, let me cross it out. No, I was right. It's, yeah. it's still very funny. And potent. when we ate them, I was like, yeah, they are potent. potent. <laughs> like, do you smoke weed, too? I do. How regularly? Uh, not right. I like edibles more. Yeah? Yeah. Like, what's your milligram go-to? How, 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 how like many? In the, uh, Ridiculous I, tolerance? I grew up next to a nuclear power plant. I really <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's, it's like Homer Simpson. I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. My friends, like my best friend that I grew up with, we talk all the time and she's like, she lives in Flagstaff, Arizona. She goes, is there something wrong with us? Because <laughs> I can just, everything, like the tolerance for everything is just. I have like a piece of an edible and I am shot to the fucking moon. Really? Oh, I am shot to the moon. I am just done. I'm done. I'm completely done. Really? Yeah. It's, it's like. I, my tolerance level is so I'm so sensitive to everything. Oh, see, I'm not. I, I wish, wish I wasn't. <laughs> if there is a middle, <laughs> come on, Joseph. Yeah, come on, Joseph. <laughs> rub my dad. Rub, <laughs> <laughs> rub your dad. <laughs> Does it make it more weird that it's just his dick and balls in here? <laughs> Makes it better. <laughs> it's more what I'm accustomed to. <laughs> did you? What? Why but did I your... do smoke weed. Like I. Now everybody's like the vape pen thing. You're not supposed to do that anymore. I mean, are we surprised? These people that are like, I, you know, they're blowing out wizard clouds of smoke. That can't be on healthy. On the reg, 24-7, <laughs> and then it's like, oh, my God. There's a warning with vape pens. These things aren't as safe as, I'm like, you're Duh. sucking on a piece of machinery that I plugged right. into an outlet <laughs> in my living room. 
I'm not surprised. And it tastes like granddaddy purple. What is that? I don't want my granddaddy. First of all, it shouldn't be tasting them. shortcake. You're naming it after like kid they Kids are getting hooked on it. Really? Yeah, no wonder you're naming it after delicious things. Call you it crack name it dick. Daddy's dick. Daddy's <laughs> dick. Would suck no one's going to smoke that vape. If all Have vape ends were just called daddy's dick, I bet. The epidemic. <laughs> I love I mean, that like vape pens are hurting people and they're like on it immediately. But oh, cigarettes you spray you could spray down a whole school with the machine gun and go. <laughs> That's fine. No, it's not a big deal. <laughs> I go buy my Claritin D and I have to show my driver's license it's because so people make meth right. with it. And I'm like, but you're like I failed chemistry. I'm just trying to get rid of my sinus headache. Yeah, like literally, I get my heart's beating you know through my fucking head. So it's so here. ridiculous yeah. where our like priorities are. But I enjoy, I do enjoy marijuana as well. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan. It makes me happy. I wish it didn't make me as hungry. But oh man, I get so hungry. But I, I poop like nine times a day. Now you're bragging. Yeah. That's <laughs> not, <laughs> now you're just showing off. <laughs> Wait a minute, you poop nine times a day and you have a curtain as your bathroom door? <laughs> I'm impressed by that. Oh you God. actually have just a curtain. I do, because I it's poop like so often, I don't want to shut the door every time. Uh, I would to- I would <laughs> want two doors if I shit ten times a day. I put That's a curtain up, because you cross the courtyard if my r- neighbor's in their <laughs> room. Why don't you just go shit your neighbor's <laughs> Isn't there like a lobby bathroom or something? <laughs> I put it up so that I didn't have to shut the door every time. Now I can like have the curtain and then open my closet door and no one can see me shit without me having to shut the door. <laughs> you don't strike me as the type that would be that would give a literally give a shit. I really like, don't, but you know, I I guess it's more it's like a like a evolutionary survival thing where I just I feel vulnerable when I'm on the pot and so I just don't want any creature looking at me. But but a door would do, a door <laughs> would do <laughs> One, there's a door and a lock. I know, it's such actually, failed logic. <laughs> it's like, I feel vulnerable, so let me put a fucking piece a of cr- linen. <laughs> it literally is like a piece of linen that I got from Target. It's like, a, it's a tree. My face hurts. It's a fucking tree. Oh, my cheeks hurt so bad. <laughs> you literally have some, like, Nana's linen. Like, don't use that. That just goes over the oven. <laughs> it's not, it's it a, says home is home or something. <laughs> and the best part is when Carlin, my pit bull, gets all riled up in the house. He gets caught in it. He's twisted in it. And then he just runs. <laughs> and then he's just <laughs> You know what, I'm gonna bring my dog over here. Dewey, when he sees the curtain, he gets in it, and then he just gets into like some death's roll, yeah. and he just twirls until he's pulled down the full like curtain rod because he just gets in it and just twirls <laughs> as fast as he can until the whole thing falls. So oh like, my god! Yeah, so you would be in trouble. <laughs> so your dad's dead. So my- He's so dead. You would not believe my dad's dead. How dead your dad. is? Oh God! He's so dead. He gave your dad the tour. (laughs) (laughs) When did your dad die? (laughs) March thirtieth, twenty twelve. Brag, brag, humble brag. Oh, you're so good at being. I I kept waiting for him to go. I was like, if he does it on April first, I'm gonna lose it. (laughs) (laughs) And it was like he just made it before (laughs) him. It's April. April Fool's Day. I thought it would have been perfect if he actually died on April Fool's Day. And then came back the second, like, just kidding. And it's like, LOL. Huh? <laughs> LOL, JK. Dad's back. You're like, oh, okay, cool. Well, we kind of already erased you all of me. your details. You got me. <laughs> your accounts are gone, Dad. So you have to start from scratch. We don't even have a social security number anymore. Was your pop sick? <laughs> he was. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous. God, 
<laughs> she can't even. <laughs> oh, it's my fault. It's all my fault. It's my. It's not my fault. Your dad died, but uh. I actually oh, think God. it is now. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, uh, I feel is it prostate cancer curable? <laughs> <laughs> this for some people, not my dad. <laughs> this was fucked. This doctor said smoke if you got him. <laughs> oh my god! Oh fuck! I was literally sweating. <laughs> Dry yourself off. You want me to get you a glass of water? Are you okay? I have some. Oh right my here. god. And I can't believe oh. Chaplin is... He hasn't my moved. Butt. He's like, oh no, good more <laughs> shit. Like Say used more to, things like that. He's used to a woman losing her, her <laughs> shit and him just relaxing. <laughs> this one might not be on me. <laughs> it's Maybe me like every other it. week. <laughs> I'm just losing my mind. He's My dogs are so used to me being like insane and they they maintain their cool oh yeah <laughs> but trust me my every dog i've had has always been like oh here we go <laughs> just walks out of the room have you had a lot of dogs uh, well i've had i had my 14 year old basset hound birdie who she passed away a couple years ago but birdie and i i had her since she was five weeks old and everywhere I went, she just was so independent. And if I just would do something, I had friends over at a party. Like, she would real social and wanted to see everyone. And then if I started acting like an asshole, she's like. <laughs> <laughs> would she just leave? <laughs> we'll go and sleep in the other room. Like I, when I, It's like, I can't be a yeah, party to this. When I first moved out here and I had Birdie and then I had a, a lab named Hank. But they were both older, like, yeah. when I moved out here. And when Hank passed away. And it was kind of sudden, like, good for him for being, like, 11. And it was just, like, he just had Boom. a... Boom. So good on him. He was never yeah. sick. But there I was late in my bed. I'm crying. I'm, <laughs> she's on her bed in the living room. I go and I pick her up to put her on the bed. <laughs> and she gets up. And she couldn't jump off because she's a basset out. So she just stood at the end and, like, no, no, I don't... <laughs> we don't do this. I don't know, you cr- cry, teary-eyed freak. Just get me off the fucking <laughs> she bed. Wa- she stood at the end of the bed? Yeah, and I picked her up and she just, like like she was wearing tap shoes she like walked out and then stopped and went <laughs> oh my <laughs> god going. what a rude dog oh she was the best <laughs> I loved her. She, she acted like me <laughs> are you you're from texas yeah we're about in texas bay city texas which is uh just between like houston and corpus christi and now i kind of hear a little slight accent yes i do have a slight just accent. it's it's very unique though it sounds like You've worked hard to get rid of your Texas <laughs> accent. Cut. It starts coming out every if if I especially if I'm around people like when I go back home or something right. like that. It really. What's it sound like? Like when it kicks in? Like what's the full? I don't really know. I, I think that it's like there's just in Texas. I mean, you've, I'm sure you've been yep. several times. It, it's just a slower like a draw. Like it's not. Like, it is. It's it's slower. Like I can tell Southern accents. I can tell what part. Of you know, like if somebody's from, I can hear an accent and go, "Oh, you're from Georgia." Right. Like I can distinguish between the L- southern Louisiana. Like, I don't even know what's happening. The Lu- Louisiana sounds like they're they're only their mouth is stroking out and it's filled with marbles and crickets. It makes. It's all and they just like <laughs> beignets, <laughs> which are delicious. They really are. Oh, they're so good. But like, I could tell Alabama or like Mississippi, Tennessee. There's North Carolina, especially. North Carolina is a weird accent. Yeah. Syracuse is just flat. It's very flat A's. Yeah. It's like, you want to go shopping at the mall? It's just a very flat. Everything stops abruptly like with, a, the con- with the accent. Do you ever watch Family Guy? I love Family Guy. Okay, so, you know, Bruce. The, I don't know who the fuck that Bruce is. Bruce is the one that I've watched goes, Family Guy twice, but I do love it. Oh, uh, his, <laughs> the guy, Mike Henry, that does the voice. He's from Virginia, but it's. That character has this, I'm like, that is a Georgia, it's my favorite accent ever, is a southern gay man. (laughs) And that's it. And Bruce will go, oh, no, you's going to get sick. (laughs) You you know, know, them's going to hurt you. (laughs) And it's like, there's this weird thing, but that is such a Georgia sound. Yeah. Oh, no. (laughs) Bless your heart. Oh, Oh, no. The O thing is more of, like, in Texas, there's, it's like, oh. Oh. But then, oh. <laughs> Did you ever see the, I love documentaries. Did you ever see The Staircase? Is that the one with the dude and the wo- owl and the yeah, woman? Yeah, yeah, Did he do it? 
I, that's the greatest thing about the docuseries. There's no there's one knows. no way of knowing. There's no. It's at, such a good oh, documentary. It's so insane. The most fucked up thing was when they went to exhume this woman's body. The first like friend, they're like, "Well, we had to go to Texas, and here we are in Bay City, Texas." I'm like, "That's my fucking hometown. Are you kidding me? That's a town of eighteen thousand people." And you're I like, "I had no idea." That's where Aunt Carol went. Holy, <laughs> <laughs> we wondered. A hundred percent. But they had so they were they were all in Raleigh, Durham. Yep. And so all, and when they were on trial, the guy that was uh, the prosecutor, he was the DA, and he had this real, his mouth barely moved when he <laughs> talked. I couldn't get enough of watching it because every person in that docuseries was just a character. And he, they really he, were. And he goes, uh, well, there was blood found on the staircase. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not own, own, O-W-N. Own, own. And there was blood on Mr. Peterson's pants. <laughs> there was blood own. And I'm like, own. That is North Carolina. Like, it was own. own. <laughs> There's blood own. The staircase. And then they had the assistant DA who, free to black, and she looked, if you haven't seen the whole thing, I highly recommend it. I was obsessed well, with her. F- Did she have that crunchy hair? She w- she dressed like a five year old going to church in the eighties, and she had like the cr- <laughs> she wore so much makeup, and she's like yes. Michael Peterson. He's over here, uh, <laughs> getting on emails, having sex every witchy way with men. You go, oh, so they're gonna be soulmates. So you're saying him, Michael Peterson, Kathleen Peterson, soulmates, and he <laughs> is having sexual relations, <laughs> filth, pure d filth. <laughs> I'm like. Oh my God, this is supposed to be a murder trial. And I am like laughing this hard. So we were like the first time I saw it, I was like, this is the funniest thing I've ever <laughs> now seen. Now I need to rewatch it because I was so engrossed by the details of the case that I didn't even like absorb the characters in it. Now I'm going to watch it from oh, a new light. You have to watch it because the, there's the adopted daughters that have gone through the ringer with like every mother they've yeah, had. Yeah, it's signed. So every They had like three mothers die. Every one of them keeps dying, and, and they can just flip a switch, and they're like, well, when you say mom, who <laughs> are you talking about? Which dead mother which are you dead, referring which to? Which one that this guy apparently killed? And he was killed? married to both of them. No, the f- Cause remember the yes. first one, there was a staircase. The, the first one, that's the one that ended up was a Bay City. That was the next door neighbor of him in the first one. That's wife. right. And then her husband died in like Grenada, and then she had an accident <laughs> down they, the they all seem to have an accident yeah. around this and guy f- i mean what are, what are the odds that you find two dead women at the bottom of a staircase well you haven't been to my family's thanksgiving <laughs> <laughs> that's why we don't have that's, stairs that's a low that's a low average <laughs> we have a one story <laughs> you haven't been to nancy's house on christmas morning <laughs> she likes to get the box of wine started early on christmas oh trust me <laughs> You should see, oh, yeah, Christmas is always a treat. Just get in there, and it's like... It's fun. Christmas, holidays are wild. They're wild, and everyone thinks that it's just their family. I mean, everyone's family There's not one family, up. and the one family that's saying it's perfect, let me sit They're there murderers. for the day, High because staircase. I will poke holes yes. in that whole entire family yes. and go, why, why does she keep going to the bathroom <laughs> with her phone and charger every five minutes? <laughs> What is the drape? What's yeah. with these drapes over the doorway? <laughs> Why aren't there doors to the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> Were your parents together when your father passed? Yes, they've been married for fifty years. When he, Ooh. I was happy they made the fifty-year mark. That's a that's a huge accomplishment. It's a huge accomplishment. Yeah, they had nothing in common. They did way. Oh no, that's not, how it works. But I, I would. What the hell do y'all have? My dad would go. We love each other, and that's yeah. it. Literally, after that, we have nothing. <laughs> 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 what did your dad do for work? He was a chemical engineer. Oh damn. Yeah. So I'm sure that played no factor in his <laughs> <laughs> getting cancer. He worked at a chemical plant for oh almost my forty years. Lord. Yeah, Fuck. just puffed chemicals for forty years and got cancer. Ah, oh, what were the chances of that? You know, my next door neighbor. Uh, Joe, God rest his soul, also worked in a plant and yeah. got, not that, you know, I don't have a pieces of Is that show. I wish I could have like a, just a whole collection a of people. If you guys have scoops, I have a little scoop of yeah. my dad in here. Just a little scoop, just a little, like you're making your coffee, a little like scoop. a peppering oh. of your uncle, your aunt. I'll start a nice menagerie of death on like my if Everyone table. could just get like a salt shaker. And just like <laughs> yeah. If you could just have like a little, send me a like salt a red, shaker. Like a red pepper <laughs> shaker. <laughs> yeah. You know, those little ones that little you get in the hotels. In the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
that'd be nice. I think that'd be nice to have everyone. Yeah, just fathers. a little bit. I want to start a dead dad collection. If you guys have pieces of your dead dad you want to send to me, uh, sharp tongue podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> send me. Well, how long were your parents married? Um, they separated when I was about nine. Was but it they your remained- fault? <laughs> It was my fault. It was all my fault. They remained very close. Oh, that's they good. They were friends. Yeah, they were close. And when did he pass away? He passed away. Um, it'll be a year, October 29th. His birthday's today. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Dad. Yeah, he would have been 82. Wow. My, yeah, my dad would have been, his birthday was June 29th, so he would have been 81. And when was the, f- do you remember the first, do you remember your first birthday without him? I do. And what yeah. was that like for you? It was just weird. Like, that whole first year to me was weird. I mean, like, going through and you're doing this, like, the first year wasn't as hard to me as the second year because I was so zoned in on having heard people say the first year is the hardest. Yeah. And when I heard that constantly, I was like, I just got to get through everything. I got to get through the first. You were focused on getting through the first. Yeah, so March 30th, and it was like the first thing was, you know, not that we were like some crazy religious family or anything, but it was just an Easter holiday or yeah. uh, Mother's Day was the first thing. And I remember like, oh, that's hard. You know, like it was Mother's Day, but still that was my mom's, you know, she's a mother because of, yeah. you know. And then my birthday is May 19th. And then June was really is particularly difficult because it was my parents' anniversary Father's Day and his birthday are all oh, in June. Oh, the fun trifecta. So that was just like somebody taking a baseball bat and just beating the shit out. Oh, you, oh, you got back up again. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then my sister's birthday is in July. My mom's is in August. And then it was like, okay, we got to get Thanksgiving. Damn, it's like Wait, every every yeah. milestone you have to And so once survive. it was like the year came by, I'm like, okay, I did it. Oh, ouch. This is, you know, because <laughs> yeah. I was so zoned in on, like, I could get through this. I got to make sure my mom's okay. I, I was being more, like, protective and taking care of her, making sure that she was getting through everything yeah. okay. And my mom is not this, like, super sensitive person. Like, she would call me and go, like, what are you doing? And I, I was still living in Houston at the time. I was like, nothing. What's up? She's like, I'm, and she just would be pissed. I'm <laughs> like, what's wrong? I'm having a bad day. <laughs> and I was like, do you want to come stay with me? Yes. <laughs> Let me pack my bag. I'm like, great. I can't, can't fucking can't wait. wait. You know, <laughs> this will be great. But that was her way of being like, I know her well enough to know that's her way of going. I actually need you to. Just, I'm hurt. Yeah, I'm hurting. And it, and fair enough. Like, why wouldn't you? Your husband of 50 years. Yeah. We watched him die, which was you did super not. Ch- <laughs> oh, it was terrible. Brutal. Brutal. Fucking brutal. Like that's one of those things that oh. I kept going like, oh, I wish that on the way there <laughs> like, <laughs> Just, you? i don't want to see this Jesus. but in my head i'm like you know it was my mom my sister we were all there yeah and my ex-husband uh he was there with us too at the we were still married at the time and and it was just like fuck i didn't want to see that yeah. like i did not want that did any part of it help you with grief <sighs> did any part of being in that moment I don't I help really you deal with don't it. No, I really don't know because I, I had no like frame of reference right. for it. It just happened, and I was like, "Well, that ha-, and there it is." That's that's and fucking so it crazy. Is. Like that's like what I remember just thinking. Like my mom, my sister. I just remember them. My ex husband had walked out of the room. My mom, and my sister were just hugging and crying. I was just staring, and I was like, "Wow!" So there it is. Like yeah, it is kind that's of like it. Like it's almost anticlimactic. It. it it made me think of like all the time my dad and I were just the best of friends and how many stories he would tell me about his parents. And my parents were married for 15 years before they had my sister. She's two years older and their parents waited a long time to have kids. So we wow. didn't have grandparents. Yeah. And so I would hear my dad talk and tell these stories all the time. And I just remember that was the first thought in my head was, Oh wow. So you're going to be that story now. Oh wow. You know, like that yeah. was for some weird reason. I was like, wow. So that's it. Like that's beautiful though. That's huh. Like, it, it just was kind of, I knew it was coming, but it was still, like, the weirdest, like, huh. So that's it. Like, And I think at the, you know, that closed that book. Like, that yeah. was, it was weird. Like, that was it. He And he was uh, 73. That's which, young. Yeah, and he was not, he never, t- like, even when he was told, like, there's nothing more we can do. He was at MD Anderson Cancer Center, which is, like, a world-renowned cancer center in Houston, and he he just chose to not he didn't he was like nope 
uh, he he just was like, hey, we always <laughs> <laughs> here's an embarrassing fact is I like NASCAR. Uh, That's cool. Okay. And my dad and I would always go That's to cool. Fort Worth to NASCAR. I races. like beer and domestic abuse too. Yeah. <laughs> well, then you like the NFL. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any other <laughs> professional sport <laughs> yeah you know just nascar's even. cool but that was something like as a kid and i just remember him like so this was in march and we would go to this race in fort worth every april and i remember him like just i mean just riddled with it like it was like he was under hospice fortunately it was quick once he was put under hospice it was like three weeks yeah and, and that was it but he's he would just tell me like yeah, well, when we go to Fort Worth next month, like he was, you know, I just thought, I don't need to have this talk with him. Like I know a lot of people because I had, that's the greatest thing is I had nothing left unsaid to him. We were actually just the best of yeah. friends. And so I never had this. I wish that I had spent more time. Me too. I would, oh my God. my Isn't that, that's like one of the greatest things. So many people that I talk to yeah. about losing someone, that's one of their biggest regret. Besides had, not being able to say goodbye. Right things left unsaid yeah those two things are like so hard for people to deal with post posthumously because it's it's on them yep it, it's their it's their fuck up you yep. know and my dad and i just my whole life like we never had we we i told him everything yep. you know, like so we were just so close i saw him because i had still been living in houston and my parents always had a a, a sailboat and they like when I I got like a weekend place in Galveston, they moved the boat. So like I saw him every weekend. He came and stayed at my place. Like my mom would come. She's the least outdoorsy person. <laughs> she would go, I'll come this weekend. And then she'd call and go, it's going to be windy. And I just got my hair done. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be wind. There's air. Yeah. It, it, like that's my mom is like, she was just a big Gucci wrap and she, her hair is <gasps> a big jewelry. And my dad's like, oh, look at this t-shirt. Sleeves are being cut out. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> they could not have been more different, <laughs> but I, we hung out all the time. We talked all the time. We'd like, did he have a nickname for you? Uh, oh, he always wore toots. Toots? Toots. Yeah. I always called him pops. He called me toots. I called my dad pops and he called me, uh, putts, putts. Jesse putts. Jesse. <laughs> that was like a, just a weird, you know, what's a, or boot. How you doing? Boot? Boo or boot? Boot. Boot. Where's he from? He's from Auburn, New York. Where are you from? Upstate Syracuse. Oh. So they're pretty, they're pretty close. But yeah, I could tell your southern accent. <laughs> <laughs> they like pop toots, a hey, toots pots. Hey, 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 <laughs> yeah, my dad and I, he was so. F my dad was just, and he was just, of course, like so fucking funny. My mom's hilarious too, but in a way that I don't think she means to be. <laughs> right, I was just gonna say unintent. She sounds just from how you're describing her, someone who might be hilarious just in her own right. She just says whatever pops into her head. <laughs> it's like a child that wanders into a room and asks someone, why are there wheels on your chair? And you're like, <laughs> you're not supposed to say that. You're like, my mom would just point, like she just... I love that. I I honestly everyone loves her. I too. like that more than somebody who internalizes things and judges you quietly. I'd yeah. rather somebody come out and because all the cards are on the table oh, with yeah. someone like that. They're oh. real. You know that they're. She sounds like she might be a loyal well, she's, human. <laughs> she's also so funny because she just she'll she'll be the first one to show up to someone's house. She'll make a dessert. You know, if somebody dies, but then she'll come in and go, "Oh God, did you see what Mary Edith was wearing?" Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's was a just, southern. Oh my God, <laughs> bless her heart. Bless. Her. Oh my God. I mean, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't. But I'm like, well, you did, you know. You already did, Bob. You kind of just put it out. <laughs> but she, but she also has this level of confidence that I, I, it's mind-boggling. She'll go, oh, well, I'll go there, but everyone loves me there. <laughs> like, who the hell talks? You're like, it's a funeral home, yeah, like, mom. Everyone loves you. <laughs> they think I'm so funny, and you know, and then she'll say someone else's name. She thinks she's funny, but. <laughs> She actually <laughs> copies what I do. Like, she'll say shit like that. I'm like, wow. What's your mom's name? <laughs> Corky. <laughs> what? Her name is Carolyn, but she Corky? was like Corky. Yeah. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah, Cor it's like Corky Johnson. <laughs> oh. Does she call refer to herself as Corky? No, she doesn't. But she <laughs> says it in a way. I'm like, oh. you don't realize that that was the name of a character on 30s. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And she's like, she has, she just has more confidence. It's absolutely she hilarious. sounds like a who oh she really is <laughs> i mean she'll say things though i'm like you you know you can't say stuff like that like i realized the civil rights act was passed <laughs> when you were <laughs> it was later in life but you can't 
say <laughs> things or like she'll tell me something about I you know went to lunch with the girls I call them girls but you know we're old I'm like I, <laughs> yeah go ahead and she's like and we had the nicest waiter he and he was a black guy but he was so <laughs> nice that I was like that pertains to nothing in the story like right, the, what, what was that detail for the whole story could have been said yes without, without that but would you have said he was we had the nicest white guy as a waiter and she's like well uh, <laughs> no my dad was very similar. He would say <laughs> things like that, too. And it's just generational. It's generational. Totally it's generational. Like, it's like, you just told me in that one sentence that you're, m like, minorly racist. Right. And it's like, I don't see, I know this person, like, the back of my hand. There's not a racist. She's not racist, <laughs> but it's like, it's just a generational thing. It is. Like, it's just, just it's language. You can't say things like that. Right. And I'm like, maybe don't say that stuff, especially in front of people that know that you're my mom. Like, maybe. He was nice in a black man. Yeah, I mean, you're like, there was this guy. Now, he was gay i mean and he was you know pretty mm, gay <laughs> and i'm like was he just sucking cocks yeah, was there a dick in, in his ass or like what were you what, what are you kind of restaurant about? was this and what what does this matter and she's like well it doesn't but i'm like <gasps> <laughs> you wouldn't go oh my god so i had this way he looks like he hadn't been laid in 20 years and he was white or so I'm dating this guy. He's a gimp. Anyways, yeah. uh, he has paraplegia. <laughs> I mean, it's really bless his heart. You know? Bless his heart. I mean, not his legs because he doesn't have any anymore. But in the South, you can literally get away with saying anything horrific if you just say bless his heart or bless her heart. Afterwards. Have you like have, what's the most horrific thing you've heard someone say and then say bless your heart? <laughs> <laughs> when I say this, I'm, <laughs> it's so terrible, but I won't say who said it, but it was someone like from my hometown like parents friends like oh my god i saw this one-legged midget he seemed a little downsy but bless his heart <laughs> <laughs> i mean i just remember standing i was in high school and i just stared at this place, place on the wall and i'm like i need to um i'm gonna excuse oh my myself god. to go to the bathroom real quick a little downsy a one-legged midget that seemed a little downsy talk about a niche market and i was like I Jeez! What? I don't even know which <laughs> one of those things to tell you. Yeah, which you one do you like a to start with? Go with it's first? inappropriate as shit. <laughs> by the way, that one-legged down is probably a lot sharper than the person that yeah, said it. Was. I love. I honestly, uh, my mom used to watch a couple special needs kids, and I loved them. Mm -hmm. Those special needs children, they were the so mutual. sweet. <laughs> Timmy, this one kid, Timmy, used to come over. And I know it sounds like stereotypical of kid with Down syndrome. Right, because Timmy <laughs> had sound. Yeah, Timmy. <laughs> but he used to come over and dry hump me. And I just would let him because he was just so <laughs> sweet. <laughs> My mom would be downstairs hanging out with her friends, smoking cigarettes. And Timmy would dry hump me and drool on me. <laughs> the best thing would be if there was nothing wrong with Timmy. <laughs> he had just been doing that to me. <laughs> Fuck. Was Timmy fine? He was just a really good actor. Timmy turned out to be Leonardo DiCaprio. What's <laughs> eating Gilbert's Gilbert Grape? Gilbert's Grape. <laughs> Who's dumping Jesse May's hip? <laughs> Fuck. Drool I got bamboozled her, by Timmy. Drooled down her arm. His name was really Renner, Reynolds. <laughs> and he had like a 4.2 GPA. He just was a great actor. Oh, well. He's probably a politician. You're now. welcome. You're welcome for those nocturnal emissions. <laughs> I'm going to start trying that from here on out. Anytime I see someone I like, I'm going to go and dry hump and drool on him and go like, no, no, no. You cannot you say anything. You can't say she anything. She special needs. Let I her finish. Have a, I have a card carrying member. Let her finish. She's not done yet. You better let her finish. Just let me finish. Otherwise, I'm going to get cranky. <laughs> we let her, bless her heart, we have to let her finish because she's a little downsy. And if you don't let her finish, that's a hate crime. That is a hate crime. There was a guy that went to my high school, and uh, his whole – he had, like – there was, like, a family of four sons. They all had the same – they were all, like, mentally – Wow. It was, like, something, like – the doctors even, like, told the parents, like, whatever it was that she had, the husband and the wife, that the every same parents. one of their kids <laughs> were going to have – the same, maybe their brother and sisters. I don't know. She said. <laughs> Whatever you have that's wrong with you, uh, i.e., y'all right. coming from the same batch. You're right. Every one of them. Well, every one of their kids. Uh huh. And this one kid. Um, and I don't know, in like the special needs classes, the kids can be in the same class for you. You know, it doesn't have to be four years of high school. Right. It's like they'll. And one of the sons, it wasn't even in my class, it was my sister's class, two years older. And they, ha they were doing a rehearsal for graduation. And so they had to walk out in the parking lot onto the football field where they did graduation. 
and Jerry Wayne was his name. <laughs> and Jerry Wayne, we're, they're walking out, and I remember like I was. Why does that make me laugh? I know I was getting in my car to go like for lunch or something like that, and they're all walking out, and I hear one of the teachers go, "Jerry Wayne, Jerry Wayne, close up shop, close up shop," and he had take he just unzipped his pants and pulled his wiener through his zipper and he was just like ta-da ta-da <laughs> and i was like bless his heart bless you jerry <laughs> wayne. you know it need to breathe like don't judge <laughs> jerry wayne he's about to graduate he's already had so many obstacles to he's just overcome it out. he's just airing his ding dong and by the way probably today biggest cock i've ever seen it really life. it was just like Ta da! I'm like, that deserved a ta da, Jerry Wayne. <laughs> I wonder where he is today, Jerry that was Wayne. A standing ovation with was that. Was it Wang? Was his last name Wang? No, that was his first name. Jerry Wang? <laughs> that was all one name. Yeah. Well, I think it was like Marianne or something. <laughs> like Jerry Wayne. You know, like it was two separate names, but they were the first name. You know, like oh if you called someone gosh. Marianne, but it was. Long name, long dong. Yeah. Jerry Wayne. Good for him, man. Ta da! <laughs> I was like, is he gonna, this is rehearsal. Is he going to do this in an actual <laughs> ceremony? That'd be awesome. Oh, my God. My, honestly, my whole face hurts from laughing with you. <laughs> um, before we go, what are some things that have helped you deal with losing your dad? I, I know humor is probably one of them because uh, you're naturally hilarious. Certainly. I would say... Um, you know, your dad passed away from Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. So my prostate cancer, I joined a prostate cancer charity. And I'm a board of director member of a prostate cancer charity. And that was something, it's called the Blue Cure Foundation, which they probably won't like that I said all the things that I've just said. And then I'm plugging. It, <laughs> you know what? Any press is good press. Any press is good press. Beggars yeah. can't be choosers. Yeah, bluecure.org, go there. But um, I joined the board of directors. And that was something that, like, instead of, for the you know first few years i really i moped around i was just sad yeah. i would burst into tears i have dreams all, all the time about my dad it would i wake up they would feel realistic and i wake up i mean i could already feel like tears in my eyes and my eyes hadn't even opened for the yep. day like just this oh it's just you know gut-wrenching and it's so those things are so visceral like those dreams are oh, so yeah. and, and you start to decode them right you're like well is he trying to connect to me but is yeah. he is he is he in some realm maybe i smoke way too much weed but i'm like my dad's in some realm yeah well i was like what does this mean you know whatever and then i started realizing you know i went to i go to therapy every so often but i'm like every dream was positive it was mm. it wasn't like he's drowning and trying to save him or right. anything. It was like, oh, there we are out on the boat. Yeah. <laughs> so like we were doing, you know, hanging out. And it was just like, oh, okay, well, this is cool. I get to have these dreams. And, well, well, now what can I do instead of bursting into tears over? Just the little triggers. Just these little things. It's like, well, maybe try to do something. And so then I ended up joining this board of directors. And it, it made me feel good of like, my dad had missed a – he had had chronic, like, prostate issues. He had had an enlarged prostate and everything, and he had missed a checkup. Mm. And when he went and got one, it was already stage four. Wow. So it had already That's spread. That's fast. And that was something that – so for me, I tell, like, guys, I'm like, look – I don't have a prostate <laughs> and I've never been affected more well, by something. I'm glad you're here today. I brought yeah. you a, a prostate. prostate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stick to not, to not have something and be so affected uh, by right. that. And that's something that like, you know, of course, you know, breast cancer is terrible. I, grandmother both had breast cancer. That's something that I have to be on top of. But I think for men, they don't get the same prostate cancer doesn't get the same attention uh, i guess no it doesn't it's 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 um, one of the most under yeah. viewed and promoted i don't know if promoted is the right word but, but like one out of every four men or chance they're yep. gonna have it and you can live with it, it, it it's not a death sentence you have but you have to catch it early you have to catch it early and it's all the studies and everything that you know i've learned from and it's like it's just so many there's so many guys so many that look, no, I don't want to go to the fucking gynecologist. No. It's not exactly a treat. And I'm also deathly afraid of doctors. I have whatever white lab coats. Like, I yeah. I, I had to get my teeth cleaned today, and I was, like, sweating bullets because <laughs> I thought they were going to go, oh, you have teeth cancer, and that's it for you. <laughs> you should have died yesterday. I think that about every appointment. 
But I'm like, okay, it's going to be a finger in your ass. Like, I don't like. That sounds great. Yeah. I mean, I do it to myself. <laughs> I, I have a prostate. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. You're asking to go. go to the gynecologist. You're I like, did prostate. you check my prostate? <laughs> While you're down there, would you mind the giving it a little how do you do? Honestly, before? guys, you got to go out and get your, your, your prostate checked. It can save your life. Just to have a, f- a finger in your ass can save your life. Yeah, and I'm telling you, I've had the, the most fucked up rewarding thing ever is having people go like, I promote it constantly on my social media, and, and I have a pretty like good presence on like Twitter and Instagram, yep. and people go like, I want you to know I actually went, bec- I, I wrote this piece in GQ about my dad dying, and it was very, very like real. Like, it yeah. was like, and people were like, I actually went and got that. I got checked because I don't want my kids writing what you had to write. Like that wow. was so, and I was like, good, thank you. Like it doesn't need to be this statistical one in every four guys. It doesn't matter. It is a very real thing. Just go get it done. It's, and it's such a simple it, you're, you don't thing need to, to be get in done. A fucking brochure. No. It's not, you know, like people look at it so medically and so numbery and it's like, just go, get just it go done. get it done. Get it's it done. it's and a couple hours out it, of your day. And if you have it, you get, you get checked on a regular basis then if you do have it you're caught it yep. in time that you can and now you can they can remove your prostate rewire things and you can still pee and fuck and everything like what? that it used to be you should be the spokesperson for prostate cancer I don't sh- remove it you can still pee and fuck you can still pee and fuck <laughs> it's true it's a true thing like they've <laughs> they've mastered that so well there are probably a lot of dudes who are afraid of that right it's like yeah you can remove this thing it's the size of a fucking almond mm. and you get this little piece of cancer that can spread it and it goes dad, everywhere in his bones it was yep. and like tumors were bit like it, oh. i mean it just that quickly like it's something that's so preventable yes and you just have to be on top of it and so be on top of it dude. Yeah. what's the foundation again it's called blue cure foundation it's bluecure.org based out of houston i want to yeah. check your article from gq i'd be yeah. very I'll interested to read that it's good. And I'm amazing. I, I really appreciate you <laughs> <laughs> making my face hurt, making fun of the fact that I don't have a door that I use to shit. <laughs> I do, but I just don't use the door. Do you, do you get that thing dry clean? <laughs> <laughs> I actually do wash it. <laughs> I'm like, I got to wash my shit curtain today. <laughs> my shirtin'. Your shirtin'. <laughs> Oh my god! Sure. <laughs> <laughs> this has been one of my most favorite <laughs> podcasts ever. Please clean your shirts. <laughs> where Everybody. can my Where can my fans sure find you? <laughs> <laughs> Jenny Johnson, high five, H I number five, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. And make sure you guys get your yes. prostates checked finger, in, the finger ass. in your ass but not just from your partner right you need to ha- there needs to be a lab coat yeah and, and, a, and, and an office like a legit one. yeah not like when you got a off of amazon on the wall that right there's got to be and even those can be fake so make sure you're actually going into a doctor's office to get fingered to get fingered and it's not like you know just one room it's got to be attached to a whole building mm-hmm. with other people who are dressed the, as professionals <laughs> and there's a shirt <laughs> and there's shirt if there's a shirt in, <laughs> run Jenny Johnson, you're a goddamn <laughs> unicorn. <laughs> Happy birthday. I'm sorry. Happy birthday, Dad. Love you so much. This one's for you. Sharp Tongue Podcast. Beep, beep, beep.